let's continue on with the next two steps to setting up multi-currency. On the Setup System tab under the Administration view, we're going to click on Exchange Tables and set up Exchange Tables. An exchange table is just a way to have an unlimited number of exchange rates for each currency. So you could define the number of exchange rates you need to have so that you could use these different exchange rates for different kinds of transactions. And when you set them up, you'll set the frequency at which you'll enter in the exchange rates. And you'll set a rate variant, so you'll make sure that you put a protection factor so no one could ever key in a rate that exceeds a certain variance limit and then you'll decide when you key in your exchange rates will they multiply or divide uh, to get your functional currency. And then you can decide how you want the default rate to pull up either by something that has been entered in with an exact date so you need an exchange rate with the exact date of the transaction you're entering, the previous date, and it'll look for the last previous date that had an exchange rate um, based on uh, the limit of the number of days you search, or the next date and again, if there doesn't see a next date, it'll go backwards and look at the previous date based on the number of days that you have. And you could choose to expire rates if you want to, or to search for expired rates if you want to as well. Now when you set these rates up, again, it's all set up as part of the currency that we set up previously. So one currency will have multiple exchange rate tables, so each exchange rate table can have its own exchange rate set up. The next step that we do is give access to the currency for each database we work with. So let's look at the UK currency. You can see which companies have access and which exchange rate tables they have access to. When you set this up, if you want to temporarily suspend the use of an exchange rate table or an exchange rate, you can simply click on the inactive button and it will just temporarily halt the ability to use that one. And to reactivate it, you would just open it again. And then the final step you do to get exchange rate or uh, multi-currency going, under the Financial Setup tab, we'll choose Multi-Currency. In this window, we'll select the functional currency for this company. And if you've already done some transactions prior to implementing multi-currency, it will prompt you to run check links on your transaction. You'll also want to set up a reporting currency. This is useful if you have a subsidiary company whose functional currency is, for example, pounds, where your main company, the uh, headquarter company, the topmost company, has a functional exchange rate of U.S. dollars. You might want to set up a reporting currency for U.S. dollars. At this point, you'll set some default uh, rate tables to use when you're working with different kinds of transactions, and you can set up specifically uh, specific exchange rate tables for each uh, particular currency. So, for example, I will choose the U.K. pound, and then I'll find the particular exchange rate table I want to use and I can define it by current transactions when I'm using historical transactions, an average or a budget. That's the basis for setting up multi-currency. We'll continue on with our multi-currency venture as we travel along on our journeys. Hope this helps. Thanks.